Hey guys, so I just finished my shift in the emergency room and once again, I had a great day. Um, so the hospital I work at, it's not a trauma center, so I don't get the gunshot wounds and people hysterically screaming, oh, you know, I'm, I got shot. I was expecting to experience that, but it's not a trauma center. Um, so we get the normal, you know, if a patient comes in with a upper respiratory infection or somebody is bleeding or dehydrated, um, not so many crazy cases, but um, today I was working with the chief of emergency medicine and honestly, like I was, you know, a bit, you know, nervous, anxious because I know he was going to drill me and he did. Um, he asked me as you type questions, like he asked me about um, the area of post -truma. He asked me, he's like, oh, do you know the vomiting center in the brain? And I knew it, like if, if I saw it on a piece of paper, I was definitely going to give the answer, but I forgot it and I was so upset. My phone died while I was driving. So within this rotation, I'm working with physicians, the ER doctors, and also mid-levels. Mid-levels are NPs, which are nurse practitioners, and PAs, which are physician assistants. So depending on my start time, I'm working with one of them. So again, I was working with the um, chief of emergency medicine, and he graduated from our school, which I was so happy to see, like everything that he has accomplished. So during my time, um, I love the way that he treated, like he treated me as a MS3. He allowed me to see the, my, the patients on my own, and also he asked me my treatment. That was one thing that, um, as M, well, you know, as you know, second year, we don't learn. We learn about the treatment, but we are more focused on the diagnosis and differential diagnosis. So the plan was um, what, what test would I would like to order and what medication would I like to give these patients. As an MS3, you don't want to make a fool of yourself when physicians ask you questions. And, you know, obviously you're not going to know every answer, but you should have a strong foundation. Um, so he went a step further with me. He was asking me questions and I was so, I was content with myself today. It felt good. Like, yeah, I felt confident in my answers. And if he asked me something, even if I didn't know anything, I pulled something out. So I think that's better than saying that I don't know. So, um, my patient had, a uh, asthma exacerbation and, you know, as you should know that the main treatment is albuterol, but yes, I was like, okay, I want to give him albuterol. And he asked me, he's like, what? what receptor is albuterol working on so you should know that that's beta 2 in the lungs and then when i said that he was like hmm, okay i could work with it. but i thought that was an easy question but i feel like during the throughout my shift he kept on asking me questions and i didn't stutter or hesitate like i wanted to pull it out even if i didn't know one thing that i always say is like okay like i give myself so i give myself a five second grace period and then i will say my answer because my brain is on overdrive and it's just populating so many answers but there is a best answer and also with a patient with uh, asthma exacerbation you want to give them prednisone like prednisone which which is a steroid like that's their best friend because it literally drives down the immune system drives down the inflammation or anything that is going on chronically in the patient's body um so i had a really great day um i love learning like guys you don't understand i'm so passionate about medicine like there's so much about medicine like i'm for internal medicine is so much but once you have the um i guess you know the foundation of it it, it gets better so again i'm learning and you know, like i'm not afraid to say i don't know when i truly don't know so yes guys again welcome to my ted talks i'm gonna try to do this every time i have a shift tomorrow i'm studying i'm off so maybe i'll do a get ready with me i don't know bye